Hi. Actually, following up on what you just said, I wanted to ask, like, how do you think it can be better? Because like, one big criticism with capitalism is just like how it exploits workers with like slavery and then child exploitation and sending the Mexican workers here and then forcibly sending them back through repatriation and also the, the prison industrial complex currently going on now that like heavily focuses on minorities and people of color. So how do you think we can truly improve our capitalist system? So I think the way to improve the system, so first I, I, I'll, I'll disagree with some of what you said. I, I don't think slavery was capitalist. I think slavery is anti-capitalist. Uh, and it is, it's indeed the capitalist North fighting the, the feudal South. The South is feudal. Slavery is a feudal phenomenon, not a capitalist phenomenon. I don't think capitalism built an exploitation of labor. Um, I, I think it was the liberation of labor that they built on, you know, Dickens has it upside down. Marx has it upside down. Most of your professors have it upside down. So I, I, let me first say that. But I think if you're asking about moving forward, the way to move forward is, is more freedom, more liberty, and more individualism, more respect for property rights, and, and more freedom. So um, what was the example you gave of to, for, for today? Um, God, I can't even remember the, 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 everything you said. So, so what were you saying about something today that was uh, oh, not the, good? the prison industrial complex. Yeah, because... take the prison industrial complex. I mean, first of all, why are there so many people in prison? To a large extent, there's so many people in prison today because of a, of a war on an inanimate object, uh, the war on drugs. So, uh, you know, if you legalize drugs and you made drugs just a commodity, which is what they are, and uh, prices would drop, you get rid of gangs, you get rid of the violence, but you also get you also land up not having several million people in jail who are there for drug offenses, uh, many of them with victim, you know, that don't have a victim, uh, not in the sense of, of, of force, not in the sense of rights violation. So once you start trimming down the laws so that the laws actually reflect the protection of individual rights, which I think is the only basis on which laws, laws should be there to protect individual rights and not to try to control our behavior, then a lot of the issues around prisons go away because the population of the prison shrinks dramatically. Basically, then you have prisons with violent offenders and people who commit fraud and people who are really bad people, people who really violated other people's rights, have, have done harm to other people. And once that prison population, that's the entire prison population, you know, how exactly you deal with them, we can talk about, but it's much smaller and it's certainly not an industrial complex because it's so small, right? Um, so if you start treating people as individuals and you start limiting government to only protecting individual rights and not intervening in our lives, then I think you get a superior outcome. But that, that involves an entire revolution in the government. I was just looking at these statistics. In 1929, the federal government spent 3% of GDP. Today, the United States government spends, I mean, this 2022, it spent 25% of GDP. So we've gone from 3% to 25. So the, the, the federal government has grown 10x, close to 10x, right? I'd like to see it back to like 3 to 5% of GDP. A lot would be different in our world if we did that. And that means there, I think that means there would be a lot more jobs, there would be a lot more wealth, we would be a lot richer. Uh, you know, there would be many, many more opportunities for people today who feel like there are no opportunities before them. There'd be a lot more social mobility, wealth mobility, people going up and down in the income bracket. There'd be a lot more freedom from a, a business perspective, from economic perspective. So the movement has to be towards shrinking government to protecting our rights and leaving us alone otherwise. The movement has to be towards freedom. That's what freedom means. It's, it's, it's allowing us to use our judgment to make decisions for ourselves in pursuit of our values, whether it's in the economic realm, in business, employment, right? We should be able to cut a deal pretty much, you know, for me to employ you, you to employ me at whatever terms we want. Why is this third party interfering here and telling me how much I need to pay you, how much you pay me, or, or what benefits we pay, or a million different regulations that we have to deal with that suppress the number of people I'm gonna employ, which limits the amount of jobs, which limits the amount of opportunities that people have. And you could go on from there for millions of examples. That's one, one follow-up before that. Um, do you think they should, like the government before like it shrinks, do you think they should reinvest into like certain like minority or historically oppressed neighborhoods because of like 
There have been a lot of different policies that were specifically targeting these minority neighborhoods to prevent them from building wealth. And also mm -hmm. like with the 13th Amendment, with the never really freed the slaves. Yeah, there's, well, there's no question slavery. that there was yeah. redlining laws and there was a, all kinds of laws that restricted investment and development in certain minority areas. The solution to that is not reverse redlining. It's not suddenly to take from some and give to others and redevelop them. The solution is, is freedom. The solution is to eliminate all those restrictions, eliminate all that, and let the market actually work. Now, that won't cause a flood of money suddenly to come in, but it'll cause a flood of opportunities to be created and allow people to rise up by themselves, which I think, going back to the self-esteem issue, is the way people gain self-esteem. They rise up by themselves, not because somebody gave them money because 50 years ago something bad happened. Um, but there's no question, a lot of thinking needs to go into how to heal you know, real racial wounds that are real, that are not pretend, that I don't think America is fully reckoned with. Right? But I don't think the way to do that is by throwing money at the problem because I don't think it was ever about the money. I think the way to do that is to eliminate the barriers for people to rise up, to eliminate the barriers to opportunities given to people who haven't had those opportunities in the past. So let's just get rid of all the restrictions, liberate people to be able to engage in transactions with one another. And while recognizing the past, you know, uh, appreciating and, and condemning, in some cases, the past, moving forward. And I think that should be the orientation. Thank you. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.